Um, we've got a super panel here today. We've got uh, Mache from, uh, from PwC. We've got Raphael from Boeing and Jake from the Olivia Business Center. Um, thanks very much for hosting, Jake. Um, let's just start with you, just with a brief introduction of, of yourself and the business. So my name's Jake Jeffcott. Um, I've been uh, developing the Olivia Business Center project for the past 11 years. I've been living in Poland for almost 20 years now. Uh, and I've seen the market really develop, you know, uh, along the way. We've, we've been able to thankfully sort of grow with the market as it's developed here in Kansk. Um, and I've sort of taken an active role in, in promoting the city and just making sure that Gdansk really has become a, a destination for, for international business uh, in many respects. And just to keep, you know, the, the, the development really sort of, you know, on, on track uh, as we go through, you know, these uncertain times today and, and hopefully come out stronger at the end. So very, 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 very happy to be here today. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Rafael. Uh, good morning. I'm Rafael Stepnowski uh, with Boeing for almost 27 years, technically. Uh, I started here in Gdańsk from the scratch back in 93 together with my father. So I kind of followed the evolution of everything that happened in, in modern Poland in terms of business development as well as the evolution in the area that is, is specifically interesting for this panel, which is the investment climate and environment. That's it. Great. Thank you. Adam. My, my name is Adam Scheller. I'm the director of Northern Poland uh, in Kuszma Wayfield, uh, working here in the north and advising uh, investors how to select and negotiate the best location for their business. Great, thank you. Maciej. Hi, Maciej Przybyłowski. I'm a partner with PwC, joined the company five years ago, uh, when basically I, PwC decided to set up a financial crime unit a, as, a, as a practice in Poland and decided to build operational arm in, in Gdańsk, a, uh, where we actually had a chance to grow from basically zero to a thousand employees that we have now. A, so a big journey. A, uh, originally from Gdańsk, I, I've been, I was born in Gdańsk uh, years ago. I'm happy to be here as a panelist. Great, thanks, much. I mean, that's really interesting. That um, uh, that huge growth over that over that period of time. Um, maybe just take us back a little. Let's drill down a little bit into that. How do you see the region then, um, particularly, you know, within the context of Poland? H how do you see that now? And I suppose how do you see that transition from you know thirty employees employees up to now over a thousand? Yeah, so um, when we make, made a decision five years ago, um, uh, Gdańsk was basically a developing developing region in terms of business services sector. And I think it's still a very rapidly developing region, now the fourth in, in, in Poland by ABSL. Um, uh, it was basically a, um, a decision that was not that obvious at the time. Uh, there were like roughly 42 business centers at the time. I, there's actually much more right now, uh, but you know we saw a huge potential of the region uh, versus other you know at that time already saturating parts of the country. We saw a big talent pool, obviously the natural beauty of the tri city as well as a great place to live and work. Uh, so um, I think you know we we you know looking back we I think we made the right decision. You know the, the growth of the region was supported a, by a lots of development, new offices being opened in the, in the Tri-City region that helped us uh, as well. You know, we saw a, uh, I would say, a good, good atmosphere and support from the local authorities in terms of setting up a services like that. It, it, it's also, you know, a, it's been appreciated by clients that, you know, come to Gdańsk and, and the Tri-City region very often. It used to come before the COVID. Um, and they, they also appreciated the beauty of the, of the, of the region, but also a, uh, the talent pool, access to the, you know, very well-educated talent pool. I mean, that's interesting. And, and Adam, that was obviously something that you picked up there in the presentation around the talent pool. Um, how important do you think that is as a, as a driver? Oh, I think it's, uh, for most of the companies, is the key, key driver to actually invest in, in particular region. Um, if you 
will draw the circle around around the northern Poland, you will see that Tri City is in the middle of that big circle, and there's no like other major agglomeration uh, within that area. It means that Tri City is able to attract uh, the local uh, uh, people from local areas around, but also thanks to the good infrastructure, it's able to. Uh, actually, um, it's a magnet for employees for all the locations of Poland and even from abroad. And I think that uh, many companies who, who grow rapidly in recent years in Tri-City has a proven record of uh, hiring people, not only from here, but also from, from different other parts of the Poland and the world. So, so if the location is uh, this kind of mag talent magnet, it's... Uh, you have to only put other pieces of the other pieces of the puzzles like infrastructure or um, or simply good um, program for the investors to to actually make this place uh, even more uh, friendly for them. No, that's good. And Jake, obviously, um, Maciej there mentioned offices as well before and the fact that there was then an increasing demand for offices. Um, what was the decision based around for um, particularly placing the Olivia Centre in Gdansk? Um, you know, obviously, as an investor and an, an operator, you obviously took a, you know, a, a, I suppose a big decision about Gdansk as a, as a location. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're all local <laughs> uh, boys here um so you know it was always our home market you know it was always going to be the uh, the natural choice for us because it was it was something that we that we knew already and we had good connections you know with the, with the local authorities and uh, we knew you know the hot spots and and, and where to build but at the, at the beginning of the story uh, real estate was was new to us um, but, um, you know, following on from, from what Marche and, and, and Adam have said, it, it, it was that sort of that general momentum. We, we felt uh, that there was something going to happen here. Uh, and up until, you know, we started to build, there was, there was a, a quite a heavy lack in, in the office product. So it was really a tourism destination, hotels, entertainment, restaurants, that kind of thing. Business had only really just sort of started to sort of happen with uh, investments at the beginning from Intel, uh, Thomson Reuters in Gdynia down the road. And, you know, there was that kind of feeling that office product could actually, you know, be a, be a, key, a key sort of ignition point to get more uh, business into the, into the area. So that was, that, that, was a, that was a gap in the market that we saw. Um, and Olivia Business Centre really sort of came out of the fact that there was a, a great uh, plot of land that was that was up for grabs, um, and you know we 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 set our sights on really uh, you know trying to trying to nail that piece of the of the pie and get get this get this plot of land you know next to the university um, to then you know really start uh, the, the process of of, of putting the of putting the office space you know in, into the market. But there was a there was a general landscape here that, that the office market was missing. Um, Krakow, um, who's always been a, a bit of a, a partner for Gdansk, you know, it's in, it's it's on the opposite end of the country, but they are leading the way. There's a lot of FDI going into that area. There might be some knock off, you know, um, a knock on sort of effect maybe for for other regions. Warsaw, of course, capital city. Where else is there? Wrocław, yes. Okay, Poznan, yes. There's another one. But Gdansk has the has the scale and the size to absorb, you know, a, a, a big office project. And we wanted to go big because the plot was big. Um, so all of the right ingredients sort of came into the cocktail, and it was the it was the timing, this kind of this 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 upward momentum that we saw that really kind of stamped our decision to make Olivia. Okay, good. Um, and Raphael, I mean, it's really interesting. Um, often I'm, I'm discussing these with investors. Um, and so it's very interesting to have corporate occupiers here. Um, I suppose, uh, looking at the evolution of your business and the decision to locate there, um, was it similar to Match's view? I mean, how did you make that decision? And, and what's the growth been, I suppose? Uh, I, would, I would say that was quite fundamentally different on one hand. On the other, the drivers of what happened are, are truly, truly similar. But I would like to jump one, one, one step behind and kind of describe why I believe Tri-City has this unique capability of creating the investment climate. 
it's it's for the climate and for all the stuff that my uh, other colleagues explained. But I think it's also the heritage, the heritage both in terms of history of this special place where a lot of stuff happened in the 20th century, but also the fact that if you take the population of Gdansk back in 1945, it was kind of emptied down to maybe a few thousand people and it grew to half a million. So those who migrated here after the Second World War were usually having this entrepreneurship spirit, like my grandfather who came here and he occupied seven different apartments just to start his practice as a, as a, as a, as a businessman in, in the 40s, which was extremely, extremely difficult, of course. And the reason we are here uh, is, is kind of coincidental per se, because we started uh, family business, IT business, uh, in the university in 93, because universities were the only places where you can effectively rent some space. This was the only office space available in the market was university based. And the company was private until 2006 when Boeing acquired our assets and, and kind of start this, this Boeing side of the story. Mm -hmm. But I think when we look to this little component of academia relation combined with entrepreneurship, I think this is where I would see the roots for the, for the success of many, many companies in the city. If you take Amazon, Intel, and Boeing, three big brands, they all derive from the same building of the Faculty of Oceanographics, weirdly enough, back in the 90s. We were neighbors in one building all together. Then these companies, of course, got acquired and migrated to their new expanded roles. But uh, it wouldn't happen without the leaders of these organizations and many, many other leaders. So I think this is this combination of heritage and leadership. It is actually what's making us a, or enabling us to use all the framework of capabilities in the city, climate, environment, fun, talent pool, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's more than just one or two or three factors. It's really a combination it's a Molotov cocktail of, of factors that is driving this, this thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really interesting. I mean, feel free to come in on that, Jake, if you want. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, you know, it's something that we've, we've, we've pointed out uh, within, 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 with investors over, over the course of, you know, yeah, I mean, t 10 years of development here. Um, whereas, you know, Krakow has seen a lot of, you know, newcomers. They've been the first base for a big brand, the State Streets or Brown Brothers Harriman or people like that that have, actually come into to, to Poland, you know, from, from, from essentially nowhere. Uh, or there's been a link maybe from Prague, you know, because there's been an American presence in Prague and that kind of like played off on, on Krakow a bit. And here, you know, uh, we have a lot, we have a more sort of a, a homegrown kind of, of, of base, as, as, as Rafael pointed out. And a lot of those, a lot of those um, have started small and, and local as, as startups with, with, local, with local entrepreneurs. Which have gone on to be rebranded and, and expanded, you know. So, I mean, even Thomson Reuters, um, which now you know it's over a thousand people. Also, you know that was that was originally you know a, a Gardenia-based startup. So, you know, we're not so much outsourcing. It, there's something maybe a little bit kind of a bit different about our our DNA. A bit more kind of IT R and D and and a bit more sort of entrepreneurial is is the landscape. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting that that innovation point and Marcia I wanted to come to you as well just to pick up the point from Rafael there about um, particularly the talent pool um, because obviously if you've moved from 30 up to a thousand you've had to rely on the existing talent pool and also potentially I, I guess attract talent to to the area so how do you see that at the moment and I suppose how diverse is the talent here um, in terms of your ability to be able to recruit, I suppose, at the various levels that you need as a, as a corporate occupier? Yeah, so we actually do, do both. Yeah. We, we rely on the, on the local talent, which I think you know, is, is developing as well, um, because we are recruiting not only from, from the universities of college or colleges in, in Gdansk or Tri-City area, but we actually go beyond the Tri-City, yeah, because the natural... Uh, what what happened was you know that naturally people from the smaller towns say within the radius of i don't know 200 kilometers away from the tri-city also a 
got some, you know, I would say got attracted by, by the business in the Tri-City region. So, you know, we are recruiting people from Austin, Toronto, and Bidgost as well. But also, you know, for, for, I would say, if we look for people with a more of an experience, then obviously we are able to attract people from various, say, regions of Poland, but also internationally. Uh, we've built a very diverse team of employ, employees. Um, right now we have uh, over 25 different nationalities and people actually do want to come to, to work in Gdańsk uh, or the Tri-City region. Um, uh, it's still, you know, lots of, uh, I would say, we, we, can, we can quickly satisfy our demand, you know, a doing both, you know, recruiting from other, other regions of Poland, Europe, a, but also, you know, US, a, uh, a, uh, Southern America, uh, but you know the, the the local talent pool remains very important, say, and uh, it's still it's still growing. Uh, I'm going to come a little bit to the, um, you know, to to some of the features around that, but I just wanted to pick up a little bit, um, just in terms of regional cities more widely, and maybe Adam coming to you on this, Adam, in in terms of the regional cities. Um, how do you see that? Are you seeing, I suppose, more interest, both in terms of, I guess, the, the leasing and occupier side, but also the investment capital side, um, who are looking more at regional cities? Uh, and do you, do you think that's influenced at all by the, by the current health crisis? What's your view? Oh, I think that, uh, first of all, I, I just wanted to relay what, what Jake said about the local and, and Machi and Rafa about the local origin of the of the investors, of the main investors here in Tri-City. And just want to point it out that it's really similar in uh, also in terms of the real estate market, especially office developers. Um, first three office parks were developed by the local landlords. I mean, to, I mean uh, Alcon, uh, Toru, Torus and Olivia Business Center. And that was um, during the times in which uh, many investors just looking for a talent came to the tri-city and bounced back because there was no sufficient infrastructure a good quality office parks for them uh, after our local investors just make a bold moves and uh, bet on this market and uh, prepare the construct the uh, proper office buildings suddenly um, all of those investors came back and and simply grow and uh, decided to invest in in Tri City, so so that's that's one thing I wanted to relay in terms of the regional cities and uh, cities in their attractiveness. Uh, I uh, I just mentioned and heard also Maciej uh, told uh, told us about uh, how um, easy it is to uh, attract people also from from the region and also from the from the other uh, other cities in Poland. And one of the things uh, which uh, is really um, uh, unique in, in, uh, in our region is the quality of life, simply. One of the companies here even has uh, had the kind of uh, advertisement uh, when, they, when they show on the one side of the picture a uh, um, uh, satisfied employee uh, uh, taking the breath of the, of the fresh air on the other side of the picture other employee of some kind of, I don't know, IT company in the other city with a gas mask because of the quality of the air. That's what little bit controversial advertisement campaign, but there was a big echo and lots of hashtags, if you know what I mean about, about this, uh, this campaign, and little bit true. Uh, so, so we are a kind of uh, um, unique, unique location on the map between other regional cities in terms of COVID. And in terms of uh, of the current pandemic situation, uh, this supposed 2020 is supposed to be one of the um, uh, record years in terms of uh, new investors coming into Tri City. Uh, of course, uh, lots of things changed because of the um, uh, current atmosphere. However, none of this were uh, cancelled. All of them are freezed. Uh, kind of sit and wait strategy just to look how the business globally will, will, see, will, 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 will go. And, and they all confirm that uh, Tri-City as the regional market is their first choice in Poland, for example. 
That's interesting. Um, Jake, I, I wanted to come to you because obviously um, looking at the health crisis um, in general, um, Adam there has obviously mentioned that there's there's no, he's not seeing a particular effect in terms of the capital wanting, wanting to come in and the occupiers wanting to come in. Um, what's your sense of that? Um, obviously you're running and managing a, a business centre. Um, just pick that up point for me, but but also um, in terms of the other point that Adam made around uh, health well-being, um, I guess being more important, is that something that you're particularly seeing um, in terms of your occupiers? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite a it's quite a common question. Um, you know, what's going on? You know, how how does Olivia look? Um, you know, how do you feel? You know, um, it's been a roller coaster um, in terms of you know, information coming in. We're all aware, you know, it's, it's just been changing, you know, day to day, week to week. And, and we've had to kind of uh, make a lot of changes on, on the fly. Um, Olivia is a, is a big project. Um, you know, it's 220,000 square meters. Um, you know, we've got a, a campus of buildings here. So we're quite lucky in the way that we have a lot of space that we can use uh, and I think that that's kind of been the major advantage in terms of you know office versus office versus you know I mean it depends on the age of the building or the size of the floor plate and things like that so Olivia has, has been able to sort of leverage its you know it, its size physical size to make you know different exits different entrances social distancing channels uh, different elevators to different floors. I mean, to really try and sort of segregate people as much as possible. Um, and, you know, it's like, um, you know, when, when the first, as we say, wave uh, hit, um, it, was, it was completely dead. I mean, we were really sort of down to maybe 5 or 10%. But the 5 or 10% was represented really by Polish companies. The big multinational companies who were kind of feeling much of the tension that they were feeling that they, that they had back home in New York or in London were kind of like projecting a bit onto you know the offices that they had here and so it was much I think it was kind of like maybe I don't want to say um, um, sort of over overbearing uh, kind of reaction but, but 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 rather it was it was maybe a little bit exaggerated and the 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 Polish occupiers it was business as normal. It was just like, okay, you know, we, we know how many cases we get a day and, you know, we're, we're going into the office and, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna carry on working. And so, you know, we've got a mix. And, and those were the, generally the local people and, and, the, and, and, the, and the more national uh, occupiers were, were still coming into work. And now, I mean, I've come into work today and I've been quite surprised. I didn't expect it to be so busy. The car parks are pretty full. I mean, we're into this much more severe deeper kind of uh, scenario now uh, here locally but i can see that there is actually some some life you know in, 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 in people are actually here and uh, and uh, I, I guess it's because one i think maybe there's a bit of fatigue uh, with working from home uh, i've certainly been coming into the office personally more um, just because i like i say i have space and i can and i can do that and feel safe here um, and I think that, 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 that that's something that, 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 that's going on. There are plenty of meeting rooms here which people can utilize. And so they, can, they feel as though they're having a, a change of, of pace. Uh, they're coming to work and they're getting out of the house and, uh, and they're able to kind of, you know, social distance. So that's, that, 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 that's been, I think, the, the major pickup. Um, but in terms of, you know, technology and sort of advancing our understanding uh, and generally getting the technology behind all of this to make people much more feel much more comfortable and safer at work you know we've been we've been right on top of that so you know we, we manage as we go um but yeah i mean day to day it seems like you know there's a bit of a an ebb and flow to people coming in coming coming back to the office so uh, in terms of occupiers um you know new occupiers as, as adam's pointed out uh there were a few deals on the table which have been frozen and of course we understand that we hope to come back to the table as this thing starts to, you know, maybe uh, get a bit more uh, understood or, 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 or governments get a bit more of a hold on, on what we're doing. Um, I, I hope that they come back. Um, but, you know, to, uh, companies like Amazon uh, who are here, you know, they've, uh, they've been able to expand, um, you, you know, uh, through this because 
well, results are good. Um, there's been a, quite a few expansions. There's been some new deals signed, you know, smaller occupiers. Um, so generally, you know, there, there is some momentum, but, um, you know, we hope that we will come back uh, to, to previous uh, sort of levels, you know, ne next year. Okay, good. And uh, we have one, one, one point yeah, of sure. that, if I may, because this situation also highlighted our advantages um, in, uh, in comparison with other countries. Poland, and I think Maciej and Rafał can, can confirm, um, just um, uh, in, in Poland it was quite, quite a good uh, business continuity uh, perspective going on and lots of uh, how uh, Polish companies or branches of, of the foreign companies in Poland handled this crisis and uh, keep the business continuity going it was really noticed on, on the international stage and and when company would be looking for a new site either in Europe Asia or simply America South America uh, it, it will definitely be a good advantage to see that even in this kind of situation Pol Polish branches Polish sites are operating almost as normal okay good and Rafael did you want to pick up on that of observations uh, really quick when it comes to the talent pool where we kicked off this conversation in this section i'm looking for a very specific skill set so obviously i can't find the skill set here locally i have to go around the country and outside in the same time working for a u.s as a u.s contractor government contractor we are banned from hiring specifically from many nations that are usually kind of you know uh, uh regular talent pool like Belarusia or other countries. We, we can't hire from these countries. Uh, when you talk about the consequence of, of COVID and, and I really like this business continuity planning, planning point, I, I, I completely agree. We moved completely remotely in March uh, earlier this year. And then with the second wave, we are also pretty much back to lock, uh, lockdown situation. I maybe see 20, 30 people out of 600 that are coming to the office on a regular basis. In the same time, I think this is like with every crisis comes opportunity. And I think now when you ask what is really the role of, for example, people like Jake and his organizations, how they can support the business in an absence of new projects or a, this freezing of new projects. I think this is truly a call for this side of the business in terms of smart infrastructure. I think we made it but we made it barely i mean it was a lot of guerrilla strategies because we never knew and simply i was unable to call in this morning also because of some restrictions or whatever so i, I think guys who were able to offer the regular offices now the call for this part of the business is how they can support the new reality of working from the office working remotely working in the hybrid mode maybe the use of space will be now different maybe it will be the need for more, more spacious areas, more kind of co-working areas. So I think there's a lot of opportunities in that respect. And if we are able to go through that, I think we can address this new paradigm of Poland where the, our value prop is confidence of doing business. It's more than the low cost or talent pool. It's confidence of doing business in a sustainable way. I think this is the kind of new competitive advantage that we have to shape and, and cultivate. Yeah. Uh, and and Marcia, just obviously one of one of the areas we've talked there a little bit about smart cities. We've talked about a number of those things, um, and I guess the advantages of of where Tri City came from. Um, how much does local government have an influence on this, or indeed national government, in terms of creating the right infrastructure, um, be that road, rail, connectivity? Um, how important is is that for you? Well, it's a, since we operate with uh, international clients like global financial institutions, you know, that, you know, a, uh, it's, it's really important for us in terms of infrastructure. And I, I think, you know, uh, the local airport in Gdansk, you know, played a very critical role. If we look back, I don't know, five or ten years ago, uh, the number of connections from Gdansk airport was really limited. And I think now it's, it's a, a, what is really appreciated by, by our clients, you know, 
especially it was appreciated, you know, before the COVID situation was like the accessibility of, uh, of the tri-city region. So in terms of flying from major European uh, cities, it was, it was really easy to get to Gdansk, you know, by air. Um, also, you know, if we talk about, you know, like a long haul flight, you know, I think, you know, we would be absolutely, you know, welcoming such flights to Gdansk as well. But I know a, even transferring through you know, Warsaw or other major hubs, is, it's quite easy. So I think, you know, the investment then in the, that, that was actually made, say, by, by especially the local governments, you know, into the, the Gdansk hub, what I think it, it was really, really a great decision, you know, and uh, it, it really helps us doing and driving the business. Um, I just wanted to pick up, um, because investment depends on occupiers like you, Rafael Amache, um, coming and growing. Um, what are some of the key trends that you're seeing and that you're expecting um, and that maybe will then help inform what, what we can expect in terms of investment? Um, let's just start with you, Rafael, on that one. As, as Boeing, we were under immense pressure even before COVID. You know, the, the MAX aircraft grounding in March 19 actually resulted in an ongoing crisis. So, so Boeing is in the crisis management mode since almost two years now. And obviously, that led to many restructuring decisions. And especially now with falling demand on various services we provide to airlines and other operators, we had to shrink down our, we had to scale back. We were at 700. 730 people before COVID, now we are about 100 less. And obviously that, that kind of, you know, suggests, and, and we follow this optimization of the footprint, maybe a little bit of a consolidation of the, of the space. Uh, but in the same time, we develop this, what's called flexible workplace initiatives, meaning we still will, we will need an office still. It will be different office. It will be utilized differently. But it's kind of repeating what I said in the previous section. This is how you utilize the, the, the office space and how you change the, the methodology of motivating people working in this new, new re reality. So that would be the call number one for, for 21. Uh, I, I kind of gave some insights of what I think may be happening to the uh, office uh, operators, landlords. I think many companies will now look into the terms of lease contracts. I think this will become, there will be a lot of pressure on more flexible, more business related uh, terms of longer term contract getting into maybe more digestible chunks of, 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 of lease uh, dash occupation. That may come with different rates. Maybe there will be a lot of differentiation in the product itself. You know, we work type of thing that would be more expensive versus long-term engagement at, at a different cost level. So I, I think generally there is a lot of opportunities in this, in this field. And it would be great if we can offer this flexibility to the investors. I think this will be another way of, of presenting Gdańsk Tri-City area as this, you know, ent entrepreneur driven, flexible, uh, confident place to do business. Great. And, and Macho, in terms of, uh, I suppose, your business, um, where are you seeing the potential growth? And I suppose, what does that mean for, for the real estate side from your point of view? I don't actually, to be honest, I don't anticipate a big change you know, to what we've been experiencing in the past. A, uh, it, it, for various reasons, you know, the nature of, of our business is very much a I would say a reliant on the on the office on the office space. Say we deal with the client's data and we need to a uh, fulfill the highest information security standards. So you know, for us, actually working from home is rather an exception than business as usual. So from from my perspective, it's it's not a going to change unless our clients will will see it differently. Uh, also, speaking to our staff on a regular basis, you know, I, I, I can, I, I'm getting, you know, more and more questions on uh, on when we are going to go back and work from the offices. So I think that the social uh, the social impact of working from home is getting it's getting really, really important. Uh, so I think, you know, I, I, after after I would say, you know, at least 12 months of, 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 of remote work, people would love to go to the, to the offices, go, go back to the offices and, and at least, you know, meet on a regular basis. I, uh, 
So it, it's an interesting, uh, it's a very interesting, uh, I would say, a, a question, what's going to happen? I think, you know, we don't know, to be honest. And uh, uh, from, from our employees' point of view, I think, you know, they will really want to go back to the offices. Obviously, there will be uh, some, some other companies will, will probably uh, see it differently. You know, th there's lots of discussions about new normal, about like very flexible uh, ways of working and things like that. So uh, we'll see. I think you know that the, the, you know uh, the future will will actually be really interesting. Um, Adam, in in terms of the, uh, I suppose in terms of the sectors, uh, why don't you give us a, a an outlook on the key sectors and the opportunities there? We can start from the office sector. Obviously, uh, I think the the two sides uh, of the of the story, which was presented by Maci and Rafael, so. Um, this big question if we're going to in the next years we if, if companies will go to uh, full remote work work or uh, it will it will simply this this change from the uh, permanent office to the remote work will be speeded up in in the next years we will see uh, and then the second the, the second side of the story is that people would like to come back to the office both employ employers would like to see the, the the employees in the office and 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 people working for a particular company would like to socialize get back to their uh, own desks uh, actually uh, i think that lots of uncertainty on the market uh, from both from tenant sides from the landlord side and as you can as you can imagine uh, real estate are perceived kind of like a stable business so so landlords would like to know what's going to happen in the next few years now everybody has as i said before uh, a sit and see approach plus some trying to figure out some scenarios for the future so most of the companies um, are planning to to test uh, remote works for 30 percent average of the of the workforce uh, in some companies even 50 percent of the of the employees will uh, work uh, remotely uh, and and most of uh, part of the of the companies are quite sure it will work for them because of the nature of the business or the things the employers are actually doing every day uh, but for most of them it's it's a still a big question how we're gonna to what will be the outcome what will be the result and if they will need to get back uh, again to the to the stable permanent workplace um, we will see what what will happen however we can we can say right now that it's about 30 percent of uh, of the of the company's uh, headcount and and additional thing we can be sure that we can we can no more associate the growth of the company uh, or particular site with the growth of their office space simply till now it was quite simple if the company will hire like 100 people more they will need approximately 1000 square meters or, or, or 800 or 1200 it depends on the uh, simply the density of the space now it can be associated in that way so so it, we will see lots of changes of course the uh, drive for a flexibility it will be a big challenge for the landlords uh, to sign for example not five-year leases but but a shorter one or the competition from the uh, um, from the flex office uh, sector that will be also the challenge and um, i think in tri-city we will observe the kind of uh, gap in the supply uh, we have more than few um, office buildings under construction currently a huge ones and not very much movement on the market it means that if they will be filled up with tenants it will happen next year or in 2022 or even in or even in 2023 and that means that additional investments new buildings new supply will come in much more later right now landlords developers are not ready to decide to start a second for example stage of the office complex and I don't think they will be ready to do that for, uh, next well, next year. So, so that's that's the office. Uh, in, uh, I think the sector which is booming right now, and it's worth to mention, it's industrial. 
it's simply uh, one of the sector a real estate sector sectors which is uh, who is benef which is benefiting from the from the current situation and record high uh, market growth rates uh, we we observe on this on this on this market in tri city it was 80% over the last two years, and now um, it's, it's it's spinning up. Uh, it's based on the e-commerce, of course, development, on the uh, uh, nature of the Tri-City uh, location between two harbors, uh, um, busy airport, rail, railroad, and, and highway connections. So I think we will see the, the Huge development of that of that sector in in the in the northern region, and uh, in terms of uh, towards about the residential, uh, for the last five seven years we observed a massive uh, income of the new capital to the to the to the tri city and a huge development of of uh, of the residential market. Uh, right now it's it's slowed down, but still. Uh, uh, that this is one of the main sectors which not only huge uh, capital groups are investing in, but also, uh, you know, uh, common people and and uh, everyone is putting their savings into the real uh, residential real estate, which is pushing market uh, forward uh, despite of the uh, lower demand during the COVID. Okay, great. Um, and Jake, looking forward to kind of 2021, um, that, that kind of area, how do you see the, the outlook for this, I suppose? What do, what's your view on the, on the key themes and, and opportunities, whether you're an occupier or an investor? We are, we are due um, you know, a big uptick. Uh, I, I've, I've certainly heard from you know, people in the know that it's going to be, you know, Q, Q2, I think it's going to be a real um, revolution. In, in terms of, of getting back to business as normal. Um, and I think that as, as Gdansk really sort of continues this rather organic growth with, you know, positive migration, people coming in, Adam just said, you know, massive slowdown, but uh, there was a massive development in the residential sector because people, you know, want to be here. People want to live here. Um, and as that kind of continues, and I think that's only going to be aided by, you know, the, the current health, uh, crisis. I think that that's that's just going to be sort of like bubbling under um, and, and sort of give give momentum. You know, to, to when when this biz, when this wave of business comes back to us, I think it's just going to it's going to really sort of be a catalyst for it. Um, and I think that with you know with the business process services being more resilient, perhaps you know, in this flexible way of working, the switch from office, home office, back hybrid, etc. As Raphael pointed out, I think that all of those things are going to kind of come come together and be and be very very, very positive for the region. Um, so I, I see I see I see it being you know, gen 2021 Q2 Q3. I think that's going to be when when we when we start to, to see a lot more confidence come back and and Gdansk will be a will, will will be a big winner. My only comment here is that we are not living in a vacuum, and to what to everything that that Adam and Jake said, I think it's really important how the overall economic situation of the country will develop. Currently, we are living in a recession type of environment. And obviously, that will bring the base down. So development from the lower base will be, will be relatively significant and, and, and easier. The issue is if we are able to kind of sustain this, this capability of, of growing the economy, and then, of course, this will directly impact your, 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 uh, your sector of, 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 of business. We are not living in, in an extremely easy yeah. times. There is some social unrest. There is a lot of stuff going on in politics. This will have an influence. So while I believe next year, especially from the health perspective, I am very optimistic, like probably everybody here in the room. I'm also quite, maybe not concerned, but I, I kind of try to understand what will be the impact of an overall situation, even not only on the national level, but also on the on the international pattern. So, uh, and that's actually great because that means that we are part of the global economy with all the pros and cons yes. of, this, of this fact. Thanks very much. Um, really interesting session. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, 
interesting here also that um, the, the next session that we've got coming up um, is going to be at 2.15, so please join us for that one, which is going to be looking at investment capital and sectors. Um, and, and particularly interesting there, we've got Douglas Edwards from Core Estate, and I know that, uh, that Core Estate have been investing in Gdansk um, very recently. So be interesting just to just to pick up on some of the points that we've discussed in this panel um, and bring those up with Douglas and the other panelists there. Um, but for now, thanks very much for, for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure, Richard. Thank you.